join me in welcoming to the stage, Mike Manship. Best seat in the house. Since Scott's taking my seats. <clears throat> it's Sunday, and I think I've gone to heaven. I'm being cooled by this delicate breeze wandering intermittently through the open window next to me as I lie shirtless in bed. It's one of my favorite feelings in the world. Today, it's a borrowed favorite feeling. This is not my window. This is not my bed. Wrapped up beside me is a tin, an art model, a head turner, a vivacious Marilyn Monroe type that is completely out of my league. She owns the bed, and I guess she technically rents the window. It's Sunday, and I think I've gone to heaven, except where is the joy, the heart flutter, the excitement of a new companion, a new body, especially this body, next to me? I reflect on the past 10 hours. There was drinking on the beach and good conversation. Well, not good conversation, but adequate conversation. <laughs> <laughs> there was kissing, distant, passionless kissing. And then before we fell asleep, she told me that she snores. <laughs> so I guess it's obvious why this isn't heaven. We're not exactly a perfectly matched pair in the midst of a heated romance. We both settled for this. We lowered the bar out of loneliness, curiosity, and physical attraction, and now we're lying side by side without touching, and I'm enjoying the breeze. <laughs> Half a lifetime ago, this would not have been lowering the bar. At 16, being in this bed would have still qualified as heaven, passion, or no passion. Still having never kissed a female, I could only fantasize about this kind of thing as a sophomore in high school. I mean that literally. I literally could only <laughs> fantasize about this kind of thing. I was incapable of actually carrying out the action. Uh, so at 16, I met Erin Fitzgerald. She was a fellow band geek at my high school. She was one of my mother's freshman English students. My mother taught at my high school. She's kind, she's funny, she's beautiful beyond belief, and I recently discovered at age 16 that she wants to date me. Even though I'm goofy and I have braces and my haircut looks like someone put a bowl on my head and shaved around it, <laughs> she wants to date me. Even though my mother insisted on telling her that no matter how much basketball I played, I was still very in touch with my feminine side, <laughs> she still wants to date me. Even though on our, first date, on our first date, I take her bowling with two of my best friends and basically ignore her like she's my idiot sister, <laughs> she still wants to date me. And I definitely want to date her. And if you think about it, her wanting to date me and I, me wanting to date her, that's all it takes to make a relationship. That and kissing. <laughs> I've heard about this stuff. I mean, I've seen it in movies, and I just don't know how it's actually done. There was this one girl in seventh grade that kissed me in computer class, but I did not like her. And uh, for the record, <laughs> and in case she's here, <laughs> and I imagine the kissing someone you actually care about is, is different. How is this kissing thing done? I think about it for months <laughs> and months. And before I know it, Aaron Fitzgerald and I are officially a couple, and I'm still thinking about it. And we've been a couple for a month, and I'm still thinking about what it is like to kiss a woman. Before I know it, I'm in her house. It's a Saturday morning, and I'm definitely thinking about it. What do you want to do, she asked me. Kiss you, I say, but I don't say it out loud. But I don't know how. What I say out loud is, I don't know. I'm ready for you to kiss me, she tells me silently, <laughs> and I know how. But all she says out loud is, OK, I'll show you the house. <laughs> OK. After this enticing dialogue. <laughs> I learned that her house is this symmetrical wonder. There's a upstairs, there's a ground floor, and there's a basement. And they're all laid out exactly the same. We could choose any room or any floor to start with, and of course we go upstairs straight to her bedroom. And we stand in the doorway. Cool, I say. <laughs> I'm looking straight at her bed. You're adorable, she says, but not out loud. <laughs> she laughs, I laugh, I take a deep breath, trying desperately to calm myself. We stand face to face. I swallow. I swallow again. 
it occurs to me that maybe my spine is broken. <laughs> I mean, I've been carrying a bass drum all fall, and maybe I just can't move. Her sister, Kaylin, her little sister, arrives in the room. She hangs out with us for about 10 minutes and then pulls Aaron out of the room. Aaron returns shortly and tells me that their mom, her mom, does not approve of 16-year-old boys and 15-year-old girls' bedrooms, so we go back downstairs. On our way downstairs, we joke about how we were obviously making out in her little, with her little sister in the room. <laughs> That's the only way we make out, I joke, with your sister in the room. She agrees. <laughs> we both know without saying it that we don't make out at all. <laughs> we go to the ground floor, and then we try the basement. Now, when you get to the basement, there's a landing at the bottom of the stairs, and then on the left is a room with a TV and a big, comfortable couch. And on the right is a room with a bed. It's as if when the Fitzgeralds designed this uh, perfectly symmetrical house, <laughs> they were afraid they might fall asleep at any moment. <laughs> or, or they were expecting to have me over and just wanted to torture me. I don't know. The first thing I see is that bed, and uh, it sort of seems to mock me. It says, chicken, without saying anything. And I say, I know, without responding. And then Aaron says out loud, let's watch a movie. What I hear is, you have one hour and 48 minutes to kiss me <laughs> before I give up on you forever. <laughs> the bed laughs. <laughs> we go into the next room over to watch a movie. In this room, we're greeted with a big, comfy couch, lots of pillows, plenty of privacy, no parents, no little sisters. We sit down. I manage to get my arm around Erin. She puts in spinal tap. <laughs> <laughs> I told you she was a good one. <laughs> I swallow. Christopher Guest turns the volume to 11. <laughs> I swallow again. That little Stonehenge descends to the stage. <laughs> the credits roll. Oh. One month, one hour, 48 minutes after we started dating, I still haven't kissed Aaron Fitzgerald. What do you want to do now, she says, <laughs> this time with more purpose. It couldn't possibly still be Saturday, could it? <laughs> I don't know, I need a deus ex machina, I need something, I need some mistletoe, somebody bail me out. I say kiss you, but I don't say it out loud. I don't know, I say, let's go in the other room, and she says okay. So we walk back in the other room where the bed is. That's right, the other room where the bed is. We sit down on the bed. Uh-oh, I say out loud, we're sitting on a bed. We have to make out. <laughs> out loud. <laughs> we can't, Aaron says, out loud. Why not, I ask. Caitlin's not here, she says. <laughs> She's setting me up by mentioning her little sister. Now all I have to do is utter the obvious witty retort and push my lips against hers, and all this will be done with. I'll be a man who has kissed his girlfriend. Caitlin's not here, she said, and I say, she'll get over it. The perfect clever response. Aaron laughs, I laugh, I lean in, I swallow. I swallow. <laughs> She's staring at me quizzically. She's patient, but she's amused, but she's running out of patience. And then she gets up and goes back into the movie room. I sit. This isn't a game anymore, this is a massacre. In the battle between me and my discomfort with women, I'm Walter Mondale. <laughs> and everyone else in Raleigh, North Carolina loves trickle-down economics. <laughs> now it's making me angry. The bed pokes me in the ribs. I've had enough. I burst from my sitting position and I walk toward the movie room. I can't do this anymore. Erin's on her way back from that room and we meet in the middle in the landing at the bottom of the stairs. We're going to meet face to face and I'm not going to chicken out. But I don't kiss her. When we meet in the middle, I literally just fall. I run into her and run out of strength. And I just fall into her arms. It's kind of pathetic. Uh, but also kind of beautiful. I guess I am in touch with my feminine side. 
I'm told that I'm a good hugger, and if that's true, it, I owe it all to this isolated moment. Because in the history of hugs, there have been five hugs that were rated the most passionate. <laughs> <laughs> this one left them all behind. I hold her. There's an exchange of strength. Our hearts talk. I breathe. I swallow. I pull back my neck. My face is right next to hers. And then, half by choice and half because of complete inability to control my spine, I just go limp from the neck up. My head flops forward, turning slightly to the right to avoid knocking Erin Fitzgerald out in her own basement. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, my lips meet hers and we're kissing. <laughs> I close my eyes. We're kissing. Kind of. <laughs> We're kissing right at the bottom of the stairs, between the couch and the bed, in this tiny little innocent womb. And then I hear her mother, and I leap seven feet back. <laughs> Holy God, my worst fears have come true. I never touched her, I say I never kissed her, I respect her, I swear. But there was nobody there. What happened, Erin asked without speaking, just with her expression. I thought I heard your mom, I say, out loud. I lean back toward her to resume kissing. It had been nothing like getting kissed in seventh grade. It had been awesome. But I've lost her attention. Let's go upstairs, she says. No, I think. OK, I say. I didn't kiss Erin for another month. And even then, only after she took me on a walk, sat with me on a bench, assured me that her parents were nowhere around, <laughs> assured me that she very much wanted to kiss me, found a place surrounded by trees, and told me, about a told me a joke about a parrot with a boner. <laughs> Aaron and I dated for 16 months, until late in my junior year of high school. After that first tour of her house, I never saw her bedroom again. I never lay shirtless by a window with her. But the kissing got easier, and it was never distant or passionless. Marilyn Monroe wrote in her autobiography, if you can't handle me at my worst, then you sure as hell don't deserve me at my best. Erin Fitzgerald saw me at my worst, and she embraced it, literally. I held her in my arms and borrowed her strength when I couldn't find my own. And it's a particular sort of strength that stays with me from time to time today. It's an idealism that shows up and says that every kiss should be preceded by vulnerability, by sheepishness, by butterflies, and by a warm and supportive embrace. Sometimes I hate that idealism. I hate that sentiment. It has on more than one occasion gotten me accused of being too serious. In this case, it destroyed a chance at more meaningless makeouts with an art model. <laughs> the last time I see my Sunday morning partner after a month of forced conversation and mixed intentions, it's very casual. We meet in a coffee shop. I've got your sweatshirt, she reminds me, then adds, I think, jokingly, and your soul. <laughs> <laughs> she laughs. No, not yet, I say, but only to myself. Oh. <laughs> He's a dog from my